सभी बच्चा स्कूल जाना के लिए अपने बच्चा स्कूल जाना न पाऊंगा बिग ठेक तो मेरू ना मन लाख सर दरा जान 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 ये जाता मिले तो जान मिले बनाम पता चल जाएंगे हम जैसे निंग जान का मामा ने उपकार समार Is it not enough that I want to pass on my citizenship to my children? In 2015, 27 countries around the world are excluding families from society. Discriminatory nationality laws prevent many women from passing their citizenship on to their children. The result: thousands are left stateless and denied access to basic rights like health care and education. They are unemployable and often destitute. Their entire future is in question. Yo, Malay, my tea leaves are so nice and sweet. My tea is so sweet, Malay. Sweet, Karina. No more God, no, no God, come on. Women in Nepal must acquire citizenship from their husband if they have not previously done so through their parents. Without proper papers, these women and their children are not recognized by their country. Stateless people are often denied the right to work, regardless of gender. Those without papers are unable to secure legitimate employment and can be reduced to desperate measures. When I came to school, I was treated very differently. Why? Because my mother is a single woman and because I don't have any citizenship. Children who are unable to acquire their mother's citizenship often cannot go to school, sit for exams, or access funding for university. I have two daughters, and since their birth, I had started thinking about what do I do to get the citizenship without their father. My elder daughter. She requires a citizenship to join any of the good colleges, and my younger daughter, she was to sit for district level examination. For that, I was told to produce her birth certificate. They said, if we cannot provide birth registration certificate, she will have to end her studies in grade eight, and that was ridiculous. I could not let that happen at all. Our plans and aims and goals, and our jobs and our studies are restricted, and it is very sad. We are in the state, the state of statelessness. Being a full citizen 
you need to have some official document stating where you belong to. Without citizenship certificate, you are as good as you're not a human being. Because for every step in our life, we need this citizenship certificate. Freedom of movement is extremely limited for stateless people. It is often impossible to travel abroad or even travel freely within their country of birth. A lot of my friends watch pictures of like going out and having fun, but then I feel restricted and I feel really sad when I see all my friends enjoying every ride that my state provides to them. And I feel really sad that my state doesn't recognize me as its citizen and I'm not being able to travel in any part of the country. I'm like a kind of prisoner in my own country. In countries like Madagascar, if you are stateless and without identification, you are at risk of being arrested. The inability to travel freely affects families in profound ways. Not only can they not visit family living in other countries, but they cannot travel abroad to seek better employment. Stateless people often face prejudice from society. It is humiliating why my country is like this. They called uh, my son, for example, a bule. Bule is not a, it's a slang. Only a foreigner who lives in Indonesia knows what the bule means. You just don't feel right, you know, to be called uh, that. Discrimination in nationality laws can also affect a person's sense of identity. Women who are unable to pass nationality to their children will often feel guilt, fear, or depression. I feel like I am not a mother. I feel like uh, I'm just an uh, object, you know, it's uh, to, to my country, you know, because I don't have these rights. I feel half woman, you know, I, I don't feel like a full uh, mother uh, to my uh, sons. You know, that's why it is uh, really uh, triggered me to do, to, do, to do something about it. In Indonesia, now we mainstreaming gender and we mainstreaming equality before the law, especially with, in between men and women. No discriminating again. In the last decade, Indonesia, Kenya, and over 10 other countries have reformed or partially reformed their nationality laws, making them gender neutral. We had to relook at our laws and make them embrace the provisions or the spirit of, of, of the Constitution. We believe that gender parity is key in, in terms of harnessing the potential for, for the ladies. One of the principal gains for women in the constitution of Kenya was legal recognition uh, that women could also, in the same way that uh, men had in the past, confer uh, citizenship by marriage onto the spouse and the children. They told me, you're not even Kenyan, your dad is not Kenyan, so you go, tell your mom to come back here with you so that we can be able to get the ID for you. It actually took me three years to get my ID. I think it's a very good thing about what the constitution carries. If I'm able to give citizenship to my child, that's a very good thing. We 
must protect all of our people and all of our children to give full human rights. The reforms in Indonesia and Kenya have helped many families obtain nationality and its full benefits. They now have access to education, employment and services, and an ability to travel freely. When we discuss about the citizenship, when the Indonesian woman marries with the people from other countries, they don't lose the citizenship. And when they have the children, the children follow the citizenship from the mother. Despite successes in countries such as Kenya and Indonesia, more remains to be done. In September 2015, for example, Nepal adopted a new constitution. Although some changes were made, Nepal continues to discriminate against women in their ability to confer nationality on their children. Reforming nationality laws brings many benefits and movements for reform are underway in many countries. Nepal and other countries which retain these laws must do better if they are to prevent statelessness and its resulting violations against human rights. In my last breath, I'm fighting for this, not only for Nepali people, not only for the Nepali society, but for each and every woman around the world. This is high time that we take a stand, we get our real right back to us. The Equal Rights Trust and its partners in the global campaign for equal nationality rights are working to eliminate gender discrimination in nationality laws to help women and their families access equal rights and to live better lives. <laughs>